Hello, and welcome to the Accountability Coach Podcast, where we discuss proven business success principles related to helping you make more money and work less so you can enjoy having your ideal business and ideal life. This is Ann Backrack. Today, we have a very special guest with us who I think you will find to be extremely helpful in helping us to be more productive so we can get more done in less time and then have more time to do what we really would like to be doing. Les Watson's passion for and expertise in self-management and productivity has earned him the nickname of the Time Lord. It comes from over 30 years of experience as a trainer, speaker, facilitator, and coach in self-management, motivation, and communication. He's the author of Get Back an Hour in Every Day and facilitates the acclaimed Creating Success Program. Welcome, Les. We appreciate you joining us. It's great to be here, Ann. Well, let's get right down to it. Let's talk about what you view as some of the biggest productivity challenges we face. The biggest, the bit, just a small topic, and just to, just <laughs> let's do that in 20 minutes, shall we? Um, oh wow, where do we start? Let's let's just go first of all with procrastination. Procrastination. How many of us procrastinate? And those that go, oh well, I don't procrastinate. Do I? Really? I think all people procrastinate in some way, shape, or form, and procrastinate stops you from getting where you want to go. It's that thing of, well, maybe I've either got more time or there's better things to do or those sorts of things where you go, I'll do it later. Surely I can put it off. So procrastination, the definition of procrastination is the habit of putting things off or delaying, especially around things that require immediate attention. And I like the quote from Joseph Heller. He said, procrastination is the thief of time. And I think procrastination is one of those things that sneaks up on you. And one of the, the causes of procrastination is maybe you're waiting for the right time. Um, a good writer, Napoleon Hill, he actually said, don't wait. The time will never be just right. Start where you stand and work with whatever tools you have and better tools will be found along the way. I love that. I think it's it's fabulous. And maybe you're just not clear on, on what it is you want to achieve and, or not clear on the steps you want to take to achieve it. Or maybe you're just overwhelmed. Maybe you've uh, started tasks and not achieved them or maybe you've thinking of ideas and not acting on them. They can also contribute to procrastination. So for me, and procrastination is a huge one. And uh, there's a, um, a writer at the moment talks about the um, five second rule. Have you heard of the five second rule, Anne? No. Five second rule. If you if it's good and it's within your action actionable item and it's within your integrity and it's heading you towards your goal, then just count five, four, three, two, one, and do it. And it came from a lady who uh, was in the pits in depression, always being late, always staying in bed, not making kids breakfast, not getting them to school. And she went, oh, she saw an ad on, on television that had a rocket and went five, four, three, two, one, blast off. And she went, I could actually do that. I could get up in the morning and rather than hit the snooze button, she could go five, four, three, two, one, and launch herself out of bed. So guess what she did? The alarm went off and she went, I could snooze or I could do that thing I said I was going to do. Five, four, three, two, one. And she launched herself out of bed. She said, wait a minute. It can't be that simple. And the next day she did the same thing and the next day she did the same thing. And it became a habit of hers to actually launch herself into the day. And then she extrapolated that into other areas called how can I stop procrastinating and just go five, four, three, two, one and do the action. I love that. It really takes you into the next level. So how's that for an opening stanza, Anne? <laughs> I knew that was a big question, Les, but I had to go there. So let, let's keep with the theme of procrastination, at least for right now. Does that work for you? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So any words of wisdom other than the, the launching the five-second rule that could help us 
to really reduce or even stop procrastination so we actually get more of our high payoff activities done. So like, as you mentioned, we procrastinate for various reasons, but based on your experience, what words of wisdom do you have that's gonna launch us, other than the five second rule, to really launch us to, to just go for it? Right, firstly, be willing to make decisions. And it's what I call leadership, and it's personal leadership. It's like, let me give you T. Boone Pickens. Now, T. Boone, obviously not Australian. He's got to be American. T. Boone Pickens. T. Boone Pickens said, be willing to make decisions. Don't fall victim to what I call the ready, aim, aim, aim syndrome. You must be willing to fire. So a lot of us hesitate and go, oh, no. Nah. So you may not think of yourself as a leader, but you are. You're leading your life. And as a leader, you need to make decisions, good or bad. Right or wrong, doesn't matter, just make decisions. If it's wrong, fix it up later. Be bold and be brave. So just choose, choose to start. Don't let those ideas that you have in your head just be ideas and your dreams just be dreams. Start and see what happens. Walt Disney said a really good one. He said, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. And it's just about taking action, any action, and keep taking action. Choose and act, choose and act, choose and act. And one school of thought that's, I, I love this, says take massive action. Can, can you ramp things up? Can you increase the output? If you were to coach yourself, if you put yourself out there as an alter ego and you were giving wise words to somebody else, what would you say to them about taking action and then just take that upon yourself called what can you do because you never know how much you can get done you never know the impact of the actions that you take until you take them and uh, our good friend pablo picasso he said action is the foundation key to all success benjamin franklin Never leave till tomorrow that which can be done today. And Charles Spurgeon said, now is the watchword of the wise. So it's all about risking and taking action, risking and taking action, risking and taking action. So rather than thinking about it, do something. We overcomplicate things. We think it's not going to be the way we want it, but we haven't even attempted it yet. So my, my key for that one, Anne, would be, do more actions. I love the fact that you're quoting people. I, You don't know me that well, but I love quotes. So I, I love how you're referencing all these people's great, great quotes. I think it's fantastic. And I think that people are just, like you said, they get into their head and they're just afraid of the unknown because they have all this garbage that's going on there in, in their head that they're trying to think, hey, this is going to happen or that's going to happen. And none of that probably is going to happen. That's so right. yeah. it's just, you know, put your big girl or big boy pants on and just take action, right? Yeah. And what's the worst that can happen? Because there's the worst that can happen. There's the best that can happen. And I say shoot down the middle. But it's in the action that you will find out. You didn't get to where you are today by making bad decisions. The majority of them led you to the success that you are. And I know that we've all had failures and I know we've all fallen on our face. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, because you can come back and go, yeah, but Les, you don't know my life. No, but I can talk to you about the positive side rather than focusing on the negative. Because is the, half, the glass half full or half empty? Mine's overflowing. And that's just based on an attitude. It's like we get up, <laughs> we, I get up in the morning and go, woohoo, come on, let's go. And that's just me. That's it's like, this is the day, this is the day. Well, I wonder what exciting things are gonna to happen today. I can't wait to get into it. So that, uh, what's the view that you have about your world? What's the view that you have about the things that are in front of you? Are they all bad or are they all good? So check your attitude. And I used to say this in the hospitality industry, check your attitude at the door. It doesn't matter what happened in the past and what happened outside. As soon as you walk through that door, you check your attitude, you leave the world behind, and you go, this is mine, I'm gonna do the best I can with what I've got. 
That's so, so true. And it's really, to me, it comes down to simply just focusing on what you want and stop focusing on what you don't want. Nice. Because you're Very manifesting good. all those things that you don't want in your head, and that's how you get consumed with that. And I think then that's how procrastination ends up being too much of your life and then not yep. getting to where you ultimately want to be. Along, along the same lines, uh, I do two exercises. I get people to hold their fingers up in front of them for about an inch or three or four centimetres, and with them, those two fingers apart, I get everyone in the room to say, fingers come together, fingers come together, fingers come together, fingers come together, fingers. And we do that 10 times. And the people in the room actually have their fingers either move towards one another and touch or stay where they were or move apart. And for the people that have them stay exactly where they were, I, I say, was anything like this going on in your mind at the time? Fingers come together and in your mind you're saying, stay where you are. Fingers come together. No, there's no way this guy's going to make me move my fingers. Fingers come together. This is the most ridiculous exercise I've ever done in my life. And notice the, the result. The result was that they stayed exactly where they were. So it's not a matter of the words that come out your mouth. It's what you're thinking about it. Now, what's this got to do with time management? Well, if you think you're going to be late, you probably will be. If you think you can't put in something on time, you probably won't. So what you think about in your productivity and in your time management in your life has a major effect on your ability to create the result that you want. So check your thing. There's another, another little tip. Check your thinking because it may be as simple as asking someone else, am I more positive or am I more negative? Am, am I focused on the things that will work or the things that won't work? And you can check yourself so that I always say, that it's about your ability to get beyond your self-imposed limitations to create more of the stuff that you're after. Because some of those limitations that you have in your life are put there by yourself, not by anybody else. What do you reckon, Anne? I think that's absolutely the truth, without a doubt. You're right on the money. So let's tackle another big one here. Are you ready? <laughs> yep. Okay. Give us some ideas on how we can best tackle the monster that we call email. What are your thoughts? <laughs> you, picked a, you picked a beauty. The monster is email. Everyone in the modern world handles email, and there are those that don't. And I go, good luck to you. Well done. Congratulations. But for the rest of us, we need to handle email. And the way to handle email is the four Ds. Do, dump delegate, and decide when or diarize. So the first one is do. As an email comes in, if you can do it in two minutes, just do it. Just handle it. Get it out of your inbox and handled. So do it. Second one is dump or delete. And there are many, 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 many times that people don't use the delete key on their keyboard. In fact, it's probably the most underused key on their keyboard is the delete key. They don't want to delete anything for fear that they'll need it later on. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And the third one is delegate. If it's not yours and you're working with other people and you know that you can give it to somebody else, then delegate it nicely with clear outcomes and time frames and ask permission. Is this okay? Would you like to take this on? I think this is more yours than mine. Is that okay? Can you get it done by Friday? To this level and they go yes and you go great so do dump delegate and the last one is decide when if you can't do it in the two minutes and you need to get it done then decide when you're going to do it and put it into your schedule into your calendar so that you have an ability to get it done say four o'clock this afternoon there's a little alarm oh i've got a meeting wait a minute it's with myself to do that action that I said I was going to do earlier today. So do dump, delegate and decide when. The decide when is a great one because in most meetings on your calendar, you can set a little alarm and say, I've got a meeting with Joe, I've got a meeting with Sally and in 15 minutes and the, the alarm goes off to give you time to go to that meeting. Same with yourself. You can have an alarm that says, I have to 
do this action. It's going to take me about 45 minutes. So therefore, I've got a meeting with myself to do this and I've blocked out the time. So do dump, delegate and decide when. The four Ds give you the ability to clear your inbox. So I worked with one guy and uh, he came to a public seminar and he said, oh, I think you need to come to my office and work with me one on one. So I went to his office. I said, what's the problem? He said, email, went over to his email and there were 6,000 emails in his inbox. And I went, aha, there it is. He said, how do I fix it? I said, well, how many of these 6,000 are relevant? He said, about, oh, I'd say maybe 20. I said, great, okay. So you've got 5,980 just sitting there doing nothing. What I want you to do is create a folder off to the side and take those 5,980 and transfer them into that folder. You're not deleting them. It's no need to have a heart attack, no need to have apoplexy. It's like, it's okay, keep breathing. I'm just taking them out of your inbox and putting them in a separate folder, not the delete. So once he'd done that, he was left with 20 emails. He said, I can do 20 emails. And he got to the end of the day to this thing called Inbox Zero. And two people handle Inbox Zero really well, Merlin Mann and David Allen, the guy that trained me, David Allen, and he wrote the other good book on time management called Getting Things Done and the GTD methodology. So if you want to learn more about uh, Inbox Zero, look those two up, Merlin Mann and David Allen. And when he got to Inbox Zero, he felt so invigorated. He left work at the end of the day, went home, had a fabulous time at home, of course he was free of any encumbrances of the email, came back the next day, there were seven emails, and he went, I can do seven emails. And I saw him about three years later, and I said, Dale, how's your system? He said, I never looked back, it's been inbox zero all the way, and it transformed his ability to get stuff done, and he tamed that monster that is email. So there's a little couple of tips, do dump, delegate, and decide when, and aim at getting to inbox zero. If you do it daily, woohoo, if it's weekly, great, and for some people it's monthly, but aim to get to inbox zero. Nice. Okay, so let's talk about the time frame. So I typically recommend to my clients that they don't check their email first thing in the morning because that tends to derail them from the rest of their day or their high payoff activities, and then they use that as their excuse not to do some of their high payoff activities that they have in their calendar. What are your thoughts on when is the best time or are the best times to actually deal with the email? What's the role that we are in, number one? Because for some people, checking email straight away is essential to the work that they do. So I'm not here to say that you can't. I'm saying that maybe perhaps per chance, email gets in the road where you could be doing other work and it derails your productivity because it's the monster. So rather than focus on the monster, do you have the ability to not open it up straight away? Are you able to do other A priorities? And I talk about prioritization as an A priority and a B priority. An A priority is something that needs to be to get done today. If it doesn't get done today, the brown smelly stuff is gonna hit the round twirly thing. And no one wants that to hit the fan. No, 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 that's not what you're after. So if an A doesn't get done, you're gonna lose money, you're gonna lose a client, you're going to lose reputation, you're gonna lose a contract. That's an A. We've all had those times when you're about to put your head on the pillow and you go, oh, I need to get up out of bed and pay that bill. Because if you don't pay the bill, it costs you an extra $150. Now you've known that all day and yet we haven't acted on it. I'm saying get your A's done early. Get your A's done early, get them done straight up so that if you weren't working on your email, you could do your A's and handle the contract or handle the agreement that you have with someone else that keeps the agreement or enables the contract or so that you don't lose money. So look at, can you push your email, here's another one, close your email client down. It's like, what? Who is this Australian telling me that I can close my email down? Yeah, you can. You do have the choice of not actually opening it until you've got your other things out of the road. And in doing so, you have a greater productive productivity happening 
by focusing on what you want to focus on, not focusing on the six or seven or 10 or 50 emails that have come in overnight. Absolutely. Appreciate those words of wisdom. So let's talk about where are some, maybe the most common places where people can actually get back an hour every day so that we're better utilizing our very valuable time? Well, the first one is make decisions. So the more that you can make decisions, the better it's going to be. Multitasking versus single tasking. A lot of people go, well, I've got this on the go and this on the go and this on the go and this on the go. And there's a number of exercises I could do around that and I won't, but have a look at how you can just focus on one thing. It's called monotasking or single tasking. Having positive boundaries not allowing people to interrupt, going, I understand that that's important, but I'm working on an A, let's handle what you've got for this afternoon. Or if my door's closed, then I'm not to be interrupted. Or if I've got a hat on, or if I've got a flag up, or if I've got my earphones on, or my ear bods, pod, buds, pods in. So it enables a person to not be interrupted. So positive boundaries. So rather than saying to someone, go away, you can say that's really good, but can we do it this afternoon? Can we do it tomorrow? So positive boundaries. And another, another one would be writing things down. So as you have an idea, write it down. Now, I know, Anne, that you would ask me, where would you write it down? Either in a paper-based system or an app, I don't really mind what it is, but you need to have an ability somewhere that you trust. So once it gets out of your head, down somewhere, it will get done. And it doesn't matter if it's a paper-based system, I still use a paper-based system. Why? Because it works for me. I remember I was working with one executive one day, she said, are you giving me permission to go back to paper? And I went, yep. She said, awesome. So she went out to a station shop, grabbed a planner system, and her productivity skyrocketed because she was working with the system that worked for her. So for you, where do you have, or what is it that you have as a trusted system? It could be an app, it could be OneNote, it could be Evernote. Uh, there's a number of different apps that people use, but if you were to take it out of your head and put it somewhere as an app, what's the app that you use? Could be just plain notes. So rather than keep it in your head, because your brain is a great place to have an idea, it's not a great place to store it. It's similar to your inbox. An inbox is a great place to work from, it's not a good place to store your email. So so those sorts of things. Clear mind, clear in inbox, it's an ability to focus on the task at hand, and as an action comes in, you can then do something with it. So again, Anne, I could, uh, I could talk forever on little bits and pieces that people can do to create more of what they after, but uh, I know we don't have all day. I know, isn't that sad? <laughs> because this is great, right? <laughs> yeah. So I talk about the fact that we're choosing to do something every second of every day. And is yep. that particular activity moving you forward or keeping you where you're at? How nice. do you suggest that we make better choices as we go through our day, our week, or even month so that we are more quickly on the path to achieving our goals. Do you have goals? Number one, have you written your goals down? Number two, if you've written them down, are you seeing them on a regular basis? Now, now I'm speaking to you and directly above my workstation is my goal for this year. So it's within my eyesight at all times. So are you seeing the goals? If it's monthly, are you seeing the monthly goals on a regular basis? Are you reviewing them? So that day by day and hour by hour and minute by minute, your actions should be lining up with the goals that you are heading towards. So rather than rambling, rather than drifting, rather than being all over the shop, as some people would say, actions should be in direct correlation to the goals that you've set for yourself either for the day for the week, for the month, or for the quarter, for the year, whatever that might be for you. So be very purposeful in looking at the actions you do in alignment with where you're headed. 
and that will serve you greatly. I always say, uh, plan each day the day before. There's another great one to go, the day's coming up tomorrow, what are we doing? What actions do I need to take? What meetings am I going to do? And what tasks do I have for myself and my businesses? So that I'm planning today for tomorrow. So overnight I can be thinking, it's like, yep, that's coming up and I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna say that. So it all happens unconsciously, but I'm prepping myself. So when I get to tomorrow, I'm already ready and raring to go to create the results that I want, rather than getting to the morning going, okay, what's on the agenda today? Oh, I should have been prepping for this. I should have prepared. So plan each day the day before, and on the back end of that, get to the end of the week and do a weekly review. Just say what worked this week, what didn't work this week, and what can I do differently? And I have a set of KPIs that I've set myself where I take all of those KPIs and I put the data into a, a spreadsheet, I print it out and I take it to my wife. And she's my accountability to go, here's what happened this week. Here are the, the, the money that's come in and the bank balances and the invoices and the proposals that I've done and the meetings that I've held and the, the training and the mentoring and the networking, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm being held to account in a weekly review. So I'll go through that. I'll also go through the diary of what happened and then through my wife's diary and also look at what's coming up for me and what's coming up for her. So we're doing a scheduling. So a weekly review, if there's only just one thing that you got out of this one, grab a weekly review. And I'm happy to talk to people going forward about what that would look like and uh, they can even reach out to me and I'll, I'll send them the, uh, the KPI dashboard that I have for myself. That's awesome because I certainly believe in key performance indicators and all of my clients track their numbers daily, weekly, monthly, so they know exactly where they're at in any given moment in time, year to date. And I think nice. that's, that is so, so important as well. So I'm glad you brought that up. Believe is my favorite word. Right. So what are your thoughts on how our belief helps us to be more productive? <laughs> now you know this one because you've read you've read you've read the book. But Henry I've Ford read your said, book. <laughs> yeah. So whether you think he, Henry Ford said whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. So you've got to be able to notice what you're saying about your own management of your own time. And it's similar to what we were saying earlier about fingers come together and if I'm always late. I'm always late. You can say to yourself, I'm always late, I'm always late, and you'll always be late because it's a belief structure underneath it. So if you change your belief structure to from what's negative to what's positive, you'll probably turn your life around and create create more of the, the outcomes that you're after just by changing the belief structure. It's like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, and you won't. Apparently, someone once said success comes in cans, not cannots, which I really like. And are you, are you going forward with your life? Are you believing in yourself? And if you ever struggle with that, you can come back to this and go, well, Les believes in me, so I should believe in myself, because I do believe in you. I believe in you, that you have something inside of you for the world. And all we need to do is clarify what that is and then take the steps to go ahead and create it. So what is that for you? I don't know. Happy to explore it, but have belief in yourself. I believe in you. You need to believe in you too. Yep. I always tell my clients, if you don't have enough belief in yourself, you can always borrow a little of mine because I have plenty for you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. Let's talk a little bit about gratitude. So how do you suggest we incorporate gratitude into our lives and then what benefits are there of doing so from your perspective? Gratitude is thankfulness. So are you thankful for what you've got? Because it's very easy, again, you can, as I call, whinge, bitch, moan and complain your, life, your, your way through the day. You just go into this rut and this this pit of woe is me and oh, nothing's ever working and I don't have and they've got more than me and it's like, well, hold on a tick. 
what do you have? Number one, are you breathing? Well, there's something to be thankful for because there are people that aren't, number one, and there are people with huge problems with their lungs. So number one, you're, you're breathing. Do you have a roof over your head? So if you're lift, listening to a podcast, I've, I'm thinking that you would have a roof over your head. So there's something to be think, thankful for. Did you have a meal in the last 24 hours? There's something to be thankful for. So those sorts of small things really add up if you start to notice them and write them down. So there's a movement called the Gratitude Journal where you get to the end of the day and you write down what you're grateful for. Today I'm grateful for my wife. I'm grateful for my husband. I'm grateful for my kids. I'm grateful uh, that I'm single. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not casting any aspersions whatsoever. I'm not assuming anything. For you, you may go, I'm happy to be single. And I go, great, good for you. I'm happy that I've got a job. I'm happy that I'm looking for a job. I'm grateful for the friends that I have in my life. So start to write down some of those things that you're grateful for. And as you start to focus on those, you'll notice your mood lift. You'll notice that you'll get lighter. You'll notice that the clouds part and you go, you know, life isn't that bad because you've started focusing on what is positive rather than what is negative. And I think you actually talk about it, and correct me if I'm wrong, in your book about when you are more energized and optimistic and feeling that positivity, you actually become more productive. Yeah, it, it's a, it like follows like. So you can be down and therefore you're going to focus on things that won't make you productive. But if you're positive and if you're optimistic and, and you've got and you create more energy in yourself, It'll make you more productive just by a matter of where your focus is. So what you focus on expands. Someone once said, what you focus on expands. So if you want to expand your, uh, your world and your energy, then focus on positive energy because it will enable you to focus on the things that are working for you and you're heading in that direction as opposed to what's not working and heading in that direction. Like you said, we could be doing this all day long. I think we both can feed off each other quite well. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. So because we don't have all day, um, you have the, I think it's called the 25 time tips. It's a free download for people to take advantage of. Is that right? That's the one, 25 time tips. It's uh, 25 time tips for busy people. And we're all busy. And sometimes we have this thing. It's like, oh, how are you? Busy. What's happening? Oh, I'm busy. I'm so busy. I was like, well, wait a minute. Is your busyness getting you where you want to go or is it just spinning your wheels? So this is 25 time tips for busy people. Uh, covers off a couple of things we've mentioned today, but goes into depth on a whole lot of others. And there, it's on a one page. It's a PDF download. And all you need to do is go to getmoretime.com.au forward slash time tips. And you can download it, you just put in your name and email address and you can download it straight away. So that's getmoretime.com.au forward slash time, T-I-M-E, tips, T-I-P-S, time tips, one word. Awesome. And I'm certainly going to recommend everyone download this and take advantage of this free offer that you're giving everybody. And I really appreciate that. Any other words of wisdom for us today? I think that kind of... We've covered some really, really good stuff today and I would circle back to the leadership thing that you are a leader, that you have the ability to create more of what it is that you want. Don't think too long about doing things because it often becomes your own undoing. That, that's a quote from Eva Young. She says to think too long about doing a thing often becomes its undoing. So it's about doing rather than thinking. It's about doing the planning, but then action. So to get more out of life, you need to put more in, do more action, be the leader, make decisions, and then have the discipline on the back end to follow it up to create the, the results in the life that you want. It's been a pleasure, Anne. I, I've loved today. Yeah, it's awesome. And I think that, you know, left to our own devices, we all have good intentions, but without that action that you're talking about, Nothing ever happens. Yep, indeed. That's great. 
All right. Appreciate your time again today. Wonderful. It's it's been a hoot, and uh, look forward if if people want to get in touch again on that website getmoretime.com.au, they can get in touch and reach out. Happy to help anybody anywhere in the world. Uh, seeing I'm here in Australia, I'm an email away, so please get in touch. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks, Anne. Remember to get the 25 time tips that Les offered by going to getmoretime.com.au forward slash time tips. Well, my hope for our time together with Les is that you got value in an idea or two or even three or four that will help you be even more successful professionally and personally. Feel free to share my podcast with others as it can be found on most podcast platforms and in most English speaking countries and of course on accountabilitycoach.com. And if you'd like to get a short daily fix from me, subscribe to the Accountability Minute, which can also be found on most podcast platforms and in most English speaking countries. And remember to subscribe to my proven business success tips and resources blog by going to accountabilitycoach.com forward slash blog. And remember to aim for what you want each and every day. Until next time, make it a great day. Today and every day. I appreciate you listening.